Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you watched the previous video, you know that I got myself a Dexcom G6, uh, basically sensor and transmitter. And the problem I ran into almost immediately is that uh, this phone I'm using right here is the uh, Galaxy S22 Ultra. And I can't download the Dexcom G6 app on this phone. So I had to use my, one of my old phones. I had to use the uh, iPhone 11 Pro to download the app and basically carry two phones with me with my iPhone mainly being used as a receiver for the data from the transmitter. So I told you that I had one of these on the way. This is a Dexcom receiver for the G6. So this will be a honest review of the receiver from Dexcom. When I first got this, I was like, what the hell? I mean, like, really, this thing is... And I don't have anything against Dexcom or any company that makes off diabetics. But as soon as I saw this design, I was like, this is something out of like 2008 not 2022 not even 2018 i mean we are talking about a design from 2008 and wait it gets better when you turn this on the screen i don't even think it's led i think this screen is like nokia kind of screen from 2005 so basically you just have a display that's probably a TFT display. I don't know what kind of display that is, but I mean, my the only word I can think of is pathetic. Uh, because basically, honestly, like I will show you this again. You get something that's probably in China costs like $5 to make. And if you look on Amazon, I think they're selling like ballpark $400 for this little thing. And all it can do, it's only a receiver for your information. That's it. You can't do anything else with it. So it's not a smartphone. I have smartphones that cost me less than $100 that can do more than this. And probably can have the app on them too. So that's it that's all this does and there's some icing on the cake because if you watch the videos if you read the manual it says because one of the questions that the first question i asked can i shower with this so can i shower with my uh with my uh sensor and my transmitter and they said yeah but you can't shower with the receiver so this thing is not even waterproof. I mean, seriously, so much money for something so flimsy. Uh, it actually, it's actually made pretty good. So like if I drop this, if I throw this, it's probably not going to break. Probably. But yeah, if you have a choice, if your phone supports the app, like my phone doesn't. This is the only reason I got this because I don't want to carry two phones with me all the time. If your phone supports the app, honestly, this is a waste of money. Don't get this. You don't need this. Use your phone. The only reason you need this, this receiver, is if your phone does not support the app. That's the only reason. Although I'm sure for the same amount of money, because I think... Uh, I found a brand new iPhone 8 Plus with 256 gigabytes of memory, which probably can support this app for like same amount of money, basically. And so, if your uh, 
if your phone supports the app, use your phone. I mean, you'll be fine. Not waterproof. So if you accidentally get it wet, uh, I don't know if this will work. So again, a lot of money for something that probably costs less than $5 to make. So I don't know what you're paying for right here. I honestly don't because the app for your phone is free. So you're not paying for the app. You're not paying for some copyrighted software that's not available anywhere else. You're just being sort of screwed out of your hard earned money with this. I mean, I got this basically, I didn't have to pay for it, but I feel bad for everybody who chooses to pay for it. So when it comes to yay or nay, if you don't have to pay anything for it, yeah, it's a good thing to have. If your phone doesn't support the app like mine doesn't, yeah, it's a good thing to have every other scenario it's a definite nay i would not recommend this I, you don't need this this is like old tech that probably belongs in 2008 let's leave it there so that's it for today guys thank you for watching uh what's coming up i just received an email from faa drone zone uh authorizing and here, uh, another thing, like really, uh, I got the authorization to fly the mapping mission that I requested probably close to a week ago. So this time it actually took close to a week to receive authorization. Uh, here's the couple things they changed. And uh, I requested specific parameters for the flight. So I said, uh, I need between 100 and 200 feet altitude to do the mapping mission, uh, depending on the surrounding structures. Uh, they actually came back, approved my authorization, but they limited my ceiling to 125 feet AGL. So they will actually do that. Uh, if you, if your request is very specific and very, uh, and, uh, worded very well, but it's slightly outside the parameters that they the FAA considers safe they will actually alter your parameters so I requested 200 feet AGL they dropped it down to 125 so I know I can't go about 125 but I'm cleared for my mission so that's actually probably going to be the next video because I'm going to fly that on Thanksgiving and I'll record a video uh, stating my experience flying the mapping mission uh, what I did how I did how many images I took how many batteries it took yada 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 everything and if i had some or any interaction with security on site or if somebody would call the cops on me so uh as pilot to pilot or aspiring drone pilots i will share all of that in the upcoming video so thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys next time